now present our next guest sandeep nath he is the founder of renewalism and iit im aluminus he founded and ran a successful strategy consulting company before heading to the himalayas in search of purpose of life and what drives our energetic consciousness as a coach he has taken the sacred wisdom of our inner power to more than 45 more than 46 cities spread over four continents and international Reiki master, business King Kong guide, mindfulness coach, and author of two books, Sandeep is an expert on stress management and applying ancient Oriental wisdom to modern business challenges. Let's now listen to Sandeep Nath on this beautiful occasion of International Yoga Day, 2021. Yoga of productivity, mind you, not for productivity, of productivity. You see, a lot of people. mistake yoga to be something that is for our efficiency productivity suppleness mental balance stuff that we do but actually yoga is what we be we are human beings not doings and as a state of being yoga is a state where we are connected it's a communion it's a joining and typically as we have known from ancient times it is the joining of body mind and spirit it's the alignment of the trinity that makes us up now as we have evolved in our complex modern world we've forgotten a lot of the principles that we knew from ancient times but where it comes to productivity that's what we'll talk about today because i come from the corporate world I used to run a company for several years as the CEO and at some point in time I got a feeling that where we were headed with the way we ran these corporations we were distancing ourselves from our true nature that started disturbing me and that's when I got into this uh, exploration of what is it that human consciousness is about to be productive you have to be producing something and so allow me to take you through three key things that you would need to just focus on and that's all you need to just focus on in order to be at your productive best and i'll give those three to you right away i call them pep p e p its purpose energy and priority as we go along i'm going to unravel these one by one to you because there is a lot of depth and what's more important than the depth in the subject is where you lie in that depth so as i speak please relate with yourself let's start with purpose now why is purpose a basic construct of productivity because You would have read in social sciences many years ago that man is a social animal, and being a social animal, we create societies. We create societies where we live, where we work, where we socialize. We have rotary clubs, we have kiddie parties, we have organizations. All of them sustain when there is a purpose driving them. Take for example a WhatsApp group. You know, you wouldn't even get a forward on a WhatsApp group where people don't know why they are part of that group. You have alumni groups that are very active. You have groups set up for task forces, missions, very active. But anything that does not have a purpose is not resulting in anything. It's a waste of time. I will come to the time aspect. So hang in there. Let's get into where you are on purpose. Shall we? So I define five levels of purpose, and there are five P's. And I find that ninety percent of the world is generally in the first P. And that P is performing. We are very busy performing. We have very active lives, and we are always doing something, and we are always chasing something, hoping to. conclude the day make ends meet those are the kind of phrases we use and as we do that 
they are very busy being busy. That's where a lot of people spend a lot of their time. Now you might find as we go along that you spend your time in more than one P. But I'd like you to reflect back. Where did the majority of this go? The second purpose with which people jump out of the bed is the purpose of proving. You have something to prove. You have sales to get. You have a war to fight. You have a target to meet. A report to write. Or you just have to prove that you're better today than you were yesterday. You can excel and self-motivate yourself, drive yourself to greater stuff. Very purposeful life. Proving constantly. Great. At a third level, you get passionate. Passion drives leaders because they, they exuberate that passion and the entire team gets energized. Passion is what you would be driven by if you were not getting anything for it. No return on effort, but you would still put that in. Why? Because it makes your heart happy. Take Gandhi for instance. He was a lawyer, uh, studied in the UK and uh, working in South Africa. By Indian standards, he was uh, every mother's pet. But he had something else that made his heart happy and that was fighting injustice. And that's what drove him and continued to drive him. But like every great leader or everybody for that matter who's driven by purpose, there is a fourth stage at which that yoga really kicks in. And the yoga is the yoga of communion, of joining, of your work and you, karam yoga. And this stage is pondering. The fourth stage is called pondering. Now you might wonder, this seems to be a lull in something that was climbing up from performing to proving to passion. Yes, it is. It is not just a lull, it's a chasm in fact. Because it is at this stage that a lot of people wonder, is that what I want to do? Because being passionate, you are successful. You have got what you want. You have set up that company, you have built that network, you have had that many records going out in the market. Take Michael Jackson for instance. And then you wonder, now what? And that could possibly, because you are in this flow of experimenting with stuff and getting it right, experiment with stuff that doesn't serve you. A lot of uh, young boys and girls uh, who make it to the IIT, I'm an alumnus from there, take to substance abuse because they have got what they wanted. It is, that is success. They are in the IIT. So let me try this. Somebody who's very accomplished in business says, let me try some financial transactions a little differently. And the next thing you know is he's jumped to suicide. Pondering can also change when you connect with your work. And you do what Ashoka did, Ashoka the Great. Or let's get back to Gandhi. Where Ashoka saw, I have become the king of this part of the land, but I have sacrificed so many of my men, there is so much of manslaughter. Is this what it's about? And that pondering turned him to level five. Pondering over injustice turned Gandhi to level five, which is prosperity. It is making a contribution to everything. As the Buddha said, the supreme purpose of being in this human life is to serve all sentient beings. Prosperity of everybody and Ashoka took Buddhism all over the world in a sense 
Gandhi, we know why we call him the Mahatma, the Mahatma, the great soul. Not because he was a lawyer, but because he fueled his purpose with a contribution to everybody. He became the Karam Yogi who would work for everyone. And that's the first thing to produce something. You produce a free nation to begin with. You produce equality. You produce greatness. Now you might wonder that uh, well, this is very well. I do think of uh, all five stages perhaps at some time, although most of the time I am uh, performing or proving. Maybe because I don't have time for doing so much more. I mean, I can barely manage my family. What do I do outside? And I completely understand that one. You see, what happens is that we get a wrong construct of time by the time we are uh, even in middle school. With all the homework that comes on us, we hardwire these constructs in our mind. Let me change that for you. Time has existed before you were there and will continue to exist after you're gone. So in a sense, time doesn't even know you exist. So for something that doesn't know that you exist, you can't be managing that. It is outside of you. What you've got to manage is what's inside of you. And that is energy. Woo 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 you say, what's energy? Well, fortunately, science has made it simpler for us in the last century. We've known this for four, five thousand years, but now we have a formula. E is equal to mc square. Thanks to Einstein. E is energy, m is matter, and c square is a constant. It does not change. Essentially, what it means is energy is equal to matter. Energy and matter are interchangeable. Mass is equal to energy, which means think of the implication of this. This quantum physics has changed Newtonian physics forever, has changed the way we view the world and brought us closer to our understanding of consciousness scientifically. Finally, we are out of, getting out of the dark ages of science because we have something that we have been able to use to measure what we've known experientially. You see, science is limited by what it can measure. And we have still to develop measures for how everything is energy. And if everything is energy, your dog is energy, your curtains are energy, your plants are energy, your spouse is energy, your laptop is energy, it's all vibrating. It's all atoms. And those vibrations are vibes. And they give out vibes. And we interact with those vibes energetically. Which is why Raj Yoga, which is the connection of yourself inside you, with your innate inner power, with your energy is the key to bringing this inner power out and producing whatever you can change your outer reality in whichever way, in every way. And the key to that is very simple. It is your breathing. You see, when you breathe, you take in the outer matter, the air, inside. And you do it in the present. You cannot breathe in the past. You cannot breathe in the future. You breathe now. So your awareness is centered. You are grounded. You are here. All you have to do is be aware that I breathe in and take that energy. I breathe out and exchange that energy. Breathing in, breathing out, in awareness, even for 30 seconds at a time, five minutes, oh, sorry, five seconds an in breath and five seconds an out breath is 10 seconds, nice, long, rhythmic, strong breaths. And three such breaths and you notice your state of calm, your entire state of being changes. 
If you do this 10 times a day, every hour, you will re-energize yourself every hour. And whether it's 10 a.m. or 10 p.m., you will be good to go, productive at your best. But then you say, that's all very well, but uh, suppose the demands on me are so much that even though I am trying to re-energize, there's so much to do. Happens? That's where priority comes in. You see, all the great masters and great businessmen, which I have observed over my corporate career and through my spiritual journey, have maintained priorities at five levels, very, very fixed. Everybody has these five fixed and I'm going to give you these five because if you understand that your priorities are in stone, unchangeable, then your decisions are very easy. The reason we waste a lot of time is because we try to make decisions every time, everywhere, for everything. And decisions have conflict. <laughs> we don't know whether we're doing it right, wrong, redoing it again, this, that. But once your priorities are set and you have mapped what you want to do with those five priorities, you don't waste any more time. And you're very clear in how you're going to respond to any situation. So what is the formula for priority? Write this down, you may forget. Do flying fish have walking shoes? I'll repeat that for you. Do flying fish have walking shoes? You see, they fly and they swim, of course. Do they have walking shoes? So I made this statement up just so that it's easy for you to remember. But the keys are the first alphabets. D, F, F, H, W, S. D is your connection with the divinity. It is your bhakti yoga. It is your jnana yoga. Whatever you want to throw into divinity. I throw my life project of renewal of human consciousness, which would be a sort of jnana yoga, in divinity. So if I'm making a video, if I'm writing a book, if I'm writing articles, if I'm giving talks, if I'm interacting, if I'm conducting workshops on renewalism, I'm doing it out of my divine purpose. Many people, for them divinity is prayer. That connection. Raghupati Raghav Raja Ram was Gandhi's connection with divinity five minutes a day, but it set him up because that was high priority. Then came friends and family, your inner circle, and you have to define again what's in your inner circle. Where do you draw the line? And that is what's more important than everything else. The third is what makes your heart happy, the edge. Yes. Because then you get connected with your passion, you get successful in what you're doing, you are able to energize other people because with purpose comes energy. And using energy in the right places gets productivity because you prioritize things right. So even if you have to spend 20 minutes a day on doing what makes your heart happy and eight hours a day on W, work, what earns your bread and butter, so be it. It's not a function of time. It's a function of where you're drawing your energy from. And then your work, because that's what pays the bills. Ideally, if you can merge these two, great. And finally, S, your social connects, your WhatsApps, your Facebooks. You know, now, thanks to the pandemic, we haven't been seeing so much of each other. But we do realize that the malls and the cinema halls are not the end of the world. What's important is the relationships that we have with F and F, friends and family, the caring that does take care of themselves. And we are there, but not where we are having a fight with our spouse about going to a certain social engagement when we have to leave our kids with somebody we don't want them to be with. So that's how DFHWS can sort out everything in your mind, help you get fast, 
and enable you to use the PEP formula for absolute productivity. That's yoga in productivity. And this is Sandeep Nath, Inner Power Mindfulness and Energy Coach, thanking you for listening. Do connect with me at sandeepnath.com. Love to answer questions. Love to get to know you better. Have a great day.